guys, this is Fix It John. Uh, what we'll be doing today is uh, the wife and I and the kids are going to take a little uh, one tank trip here in Florida. So any trip you take, uh, whether it's in your state or out of state or just wherever you go, you need to check a few things to keep you safe and keep your family safe. So let's get after that and see what we uh, need to look at. All right, the first thing I want to check, or you can start anywhere, but we'll check with the fluids. The uh, power steering, this bottle is so dirty, but you don't, uh, power steering, you don't check from the top side because there's no uh, dipstick on the power steering. I mean, you can look down it and uh, see if it has some in it. But how you check the power steering on this unit is uh, right there, upper and lower level. Now when the engine's cool, you want it down in the lower level. When it heats up, it goes up to the upper level. So, and I believe you can just barely see it, but it's in between uh, right there. Just in, just a little bit above the lower level. So that, that's pretty much perfect. Uh, the brake fluid, let's take you right over here. And, and if it needs fluid, add, add it, add your fluid brake fluid is good I knew it was good because I just added some to it and you don't want to overfill it there's also a line here uh, on the side here it says uh, maximum maximum level and there's a line here on the side saying maximum and okay so if you're uh, if it does need brake fluid and uh, you're not sure what type of brake fluid to put in it. It always says on the top of the cap, use only DOT or DOT4 brake fluid. Transmission fluid. The newer cars don't even have a dipstick for the transmission fluid, so you may never find it. On this 05 uh, Honda Odyssey, the transmission uh, fluid uh, dipstick is right here. And let's pull that out so we can check it. Right, 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 uh, right by your air box and just behind your battery. With that yellow handle, you see that? So I'm going to reach my hand down here and pull out the uh, transmission dipstick. Now on a uh, Honda, a lot of vehicles like General Motors, I know, uh, Fords, uh, you need to start your uh, engine and run it in park or neutral. Honda is a little different. Honda, you turn your engine off and put it in park. So that's how you check a Honda transmission while it's cool. If you can see, see that dipstick right there? needs to be uh, not uh, just under this uh, dot here. Let's get a good clear marking on it. So if your transmission uh, fluid is up and uh, you don't see any leaks on the driveway, well chances are you don't have a leak in your transmission. There it is, right there. Let me put a light on. So as long as it's right there below that uh, second dot to the top, right there, you're in good shape. Okay, and I, I think I overlooked the uh, windshield wiper fluid, but that's up there. I filled that up the other day. Uh, the next fluid we need to do check is the oil fluid. And that is right behind the fans on the front of the car. There's the front of the car towards the uh, passenger side. All right, let's check the oil and make sure it's up there. There it is, right at the top of the crosshairs. And that's right where you want it. One more thing we need to check out is the 
uh, coolant, the radiator fluid. And if you look there, you can see that that top line is the max level. So that's when uh, the engine's hot. And the bottom line there, I don't know if you can see it, but it says the minimum. Minimum level. That's where you want it when the engine's cool. Minimum. And that's where you want it when it's hot. So let's say uh, there's no coolant in your bottle and that uh, you've been uh, adding coolant for the last several weeks or even months, but you don't find a leak. You think it's just disappearing, but it's uh, because you're not finding any leaks in the driveway uh, and your motor's not getting hot, but it's a good chance a very good chance that is it's if you have to add fluid you should never 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 unless you're changing it have to add coolant to your car I did a uh, timing timing belt and water pump job on this car uh, well it's almost a hundred thousand miles ago several years ago and I have not added one drop of fluid in this vehicle so obviously, if you haven't lost any antifreeze from your reservoir down here, uh, more than likely your hoses are good. But if you have lost fluid, your leak could be from one of your hoses close to the engine. And if it's dripping on the engine, you may never see it on the ground. Another thing you want to look at here is your serpentine belt. Are the uh, edges frayed? That's your belt right there. It's hard to see in there, but it's in there. Also, you want to look on the bottom side of that serpentine belt to see if you can see any cracks or a phrase on the bottom side of it. If you do, have that belt replaced. And this is the serpentine belt that we're talking about right here. If there's any cracks or any phrase along this side or edge, or even on top of the belt right here, along the edge of this belt, right there on the edge. If, there, if it's frayed or cracked, have that belt replaced. Okay, another thing I like to check for is uh, fuses. So let's enter this passenger side door where I keep my fuses. So typically I carry an assortment of fuses here. And uh, let's just take a peek and see what we have in here. This vehicle takes some big fuses and some little fuses. So what I have, what I normally carry, are uh, fuses that uh, run in a little higher numbers. And another thing I keep is, uh, in my vehicle, is a uh, relay. Now this relay, it's an old one, but... Uh, I replaced them uh, just so I, I wouldn't have an issue and that that'll uh, I don't think that that'll replace the fuel pump uh, relay I don't know I'm not really sure but it replaces a lot of different relays uh, it'll replace the AC relay uh, the ignition uh, relay so let, let's say your car just goes wong, 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 continues to wong, 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 turn over but won't start. It could be a good chance that the uh, ignition relay is bad if it's not a fuse. And the way to check your relay is to put your finger on top of it. This is one way to check without the proper tools. Put your finger on top of the relay and turn the key on. If it clicks, chances are very good that the relay is still good. Uh, same way with the air conditioner. Uh, if you turn the AC on and your relay clicks, it's sending power to the uh, compressor. So there's a very good chance that the relay does work. So, and that's why I carry uh, just one relay. Okay. Uh, the next thing I like to do is check the tire pressure. The top one reads max load, 1,929 pounds. The bottom line reads max pressure, 51 PSI. 
So what that means, that's not what you're supposed to put in the tire. That is what the tire manufacturer recommends that the max pressure be. So when you want to know the actual pressure that the, uh, the manufacturer recommends, it's always here in the door jam. Uh, it says here the front front tires are 35 psi and they want you to fill the rear tires to 35 psi now that's on stock tires stock rims uh, I'm sort of a stock guy uh, I don't like to go outside the box when it comes to cars because uh, they pay engineers just millions and millions of dollars to get it right the first time. And I don't like to vary from uh, those specs. Those guys are a lot smarter than I am and I don't, I don't mess around with and their specs. the tire pressure is set for a particular reason. Uh, it helps handling, uh, ride, also uh, braking. So they've got it all figured out. I mean, you, if you would, uh, let's say, put more air in your tire, your level to increase your braking distance and cause, a, uh, cause your car to want to skid much more quicker. So doing what the uh, manufacturer suggests is always the best recommendation. I can. Always replace your uh, valve stem cap. That way, when you uh, go to put air in it, it'll be nice and clean. And you won't be pushing dirt and crap into your valve stem and causing a leak. Uh, once your valve stem starts to leak, uh, you pretty much need a whole new valve stem. So if you keep this cap on it, it's going to keep the dirt out of it. And that's all that does is keep the dirt out of it. And that's more important than anything. So I put a little bit of air in all four tires. Uh, you shouldn't have to put uh, that much air in it. If you have to add uh, 10, 20 pounds, you have a definite leak. So get your tire uh, filled up. And I top them off to fill them. You don't want to fill them like the uh, tire uh, manufacturer recommends because uh, it, it's going to build 10, 10 pounds of pressure on the, on the interstate, uh, especially especially with a load. So. Uh, Put in what the rep, uh, manufacturer recommends and no more. Another thing I carry is a uh, small toolbox. I call that my traveling toolbox. I never open it. Only time I open it is uh, when I need to use it on the road. And uh, for me, let's say uh, a starter, alternator, uh, tail light, battery, uh, uh, radiator even just just about anything I mean it is quicker for me to buy the part and replace it than put your car put my car in a shop and uh, wait overnight somewhere and maybe they'll work on it the next day maybe they won't uh, I could do just about anything with this toolbox right here I could I could even uh, I could even put a uh, timing belt on this vehicle but I would need a jack to hold the engine, and I do have that uh, in my spare tire kit. So I could do just about anything with this uh, tool kit right here. And for my money, I would rather take a toolbox and uh, put it in the shop and uh, wait overnight or even a week. Uh, another thing I like to carry, I won't leave home without it, even locally here, uh, jumper cables. And it's not the best set in the world, but uh, it'll get your car started if your uh, battery's dead. If your battery's dead and your car's running, uh, typically more than, more than likely your alternator's working and your battery is dead. You need a new battery. That's on the road. So if your car's running and then you go to start it again and it won't start, that would be your battery, your alternator. And if you would jump and it continue to run, that tells me your alternator is working. So always carry a set of jumper cables and for my money, I carry a toolbox. Okay, last but not least, you wanna check your spare tire to make sure you have air in it. If you have a flat going down the highway, you're not gonna get very far. So you just put your hand here, pull back, and it's uh, tabs that hold the uh, cover over it. That's all it is, just a cover. Nothing pretty, nothing fancy. 
nothing too hard and then that snaps back on so what we need to do uh, you know I just got done bragging on the engineers how wonderful they are but what they neglected to do was oh by the way this is a donut tire and most people think that these tires don't take any air don't hold air but yeah they'll go flat after sitting in the sitting in the rack for a while so uh, well we'll want to take this uh, tire off anyway I just got done bragging on the engineers that uh, they uh, pay them millions of dollars to uh, get things right the first time well what they should have done on this tire is uh, installed the uh, either spun the uh, spun the tire around or uh, put the valve stem right here where it's accessible because otherwise you have to take the tire out every time and I've done this a couple times and it is so annoying da -da -da -da. I will take the tire out and that's all it is is just a donut tire it's a limited mileage tire and a limited speed tire so if you can see it here <clears throat> 60 PSI so you want to maintain 60 in it let's see what it has in it think it's low I do we are at 45 PSI so yeah we're low that would have gotten us down the road a little bit but uh, Always maintain the proper, uh, in this case, tire pressure. So what were we at? 45, 15 pounds low. And that's good. We'll leave it there. Just a low over 60. And we'll put our valve stem back on it. And I'll show you the reinstalling procedure. Just uh, reverse procedure, put the tire back in there. Note the orientation towards the wall, the valve stems towards the wall. And screw that baby back in. Watch how fast I can do this. Just like Steve Austin, the six million dollar man. You see how fast I did that? Reinstall our cover. And it just goes in these little holes here. jumper cables back so that's my pre-trip inspection uh, if this helps you uh, like and subscribe and uh, thanks for watching bye bye